we all love analogies. In transportation, it is always amazing that a pilot can fly a plane. But no one forgets that pilots have a significant investment in training. What would it take for a non-pilot to fly a plane safely? And what level of automation is required to be safe on that plane? Hi, I'm Vlad. I am from the Meta UK branch, and I have been doing WWW release operations for three years, technically not being in the release engineering team, but helping to ship out more code by 9 a.m. than most people do in a lifetime. And my colleague Casey from the US release engineering team is also here with us today. Meta has always been about shipping. Things move fast here, and reliable and frequent releases have always been our competitive adventure. WWW is the code name for our oldest source monorepo. It stores the code that runs on our web servers, like Huck and JavaScript, includes large amounts of business logic and front-end. Monorepos remain our first option for large code bases like WWW, with many benefits, including consistent versioning and development experience well-integrated code ecosystem with simplified code sharing and standard frameworks, and centralized build and test systems. The last time we talked publicly about WWW release was seven years ago. And this is the slide from our old presentation, if anyone remembers. At that time, we have just introduced continuous WWW release approach. And it has been continuous since then. It still is. It has passed the test of the time and evolved. So we had an idea to recap how we are doing this today and what has changed over time. We do release WWW frequently for several reasons. First, reliable and frequent releases are a competitive adventure that allows our products to respond swiftly to market changes and user demands. Second, Faster release cycles increase developer productivity. Developers can see the work go live sooner, which is also motivating. And third, frequent cadence distributes changes across smaller, more reliable deployments. And also faster releases are pushing us to move faster. As an organization overall, the bar is kept high and everyone in the company needs to take responsibility. But let's look. How fast are we? After switching to continuous WWW release in 2017, we went from about 3 to 10 releases per day. And we are keeping the same number in 2024. But how long do our engineers really wait for their WWW code changes to get out? We call this the change or diff release time metric which is the wall time from when a change is committed to trunk to when the shipment containing the change is released to production. The average is four to five hours and its regressions have no negative impact on developer's productivity, delays in mitigating regressions in production, and our business advantage of moving faster in general. We reported similar numbers seven years ago when we introduced continuous approach for WWW release. So, Nothing changed since then? Not really. The web has changed. WWW repo has grown rapidly, and the ability to release code safely and reliably at scale has become more challenging over the years. First, the growth is related to the size of the code base. The number of lights and code constantly grows due to the ongoing development. That introduces multiple challenges for the release operations. For example, the increasing number of lines of the code has led to a greater volume of tests. And consequently, we saw an increase in the number of test failures that must be addressed. Additionally, the growth of the code base has negatively impacted the performance of our tooling, builds, and further inefficiencies. Second, the number of changes we release grew rapidly as the number of developers working on the WWW code base. As a result, our usual release in 2024 
contains several times more changes than we saw seven years ago. But that also brought us mobile breakages, land conflicts, and a number of other obstacles scaling together with a number of engineers working in the code base. At the same time, it was not easy to add more support without causing communication issues. Also, the number of products in the WWW and complex dependencies between them grew over the years. That put additional pressure on our operational scalability. To meet this changing scale and business needs, we adjusted some of our technical and operational approaches over the years while keeping our core principles and velocity intact. Without these adjustments, we would have faced delays in releases, more frequent and prolonged production issues affecting reliability, and an unsustainable workload for the team responsible for managing the release process. Now I'll hand it over to Casey, who will provide more insights to the principles and internals of the WWW continuous release process before we dive into how we addressed the challenges. Hi, I'm Casey from Meta's release engineering team, where I focus on supporting WWW releases and reducing our operational workload. Before we talk about our recent efforts, I'm going to touch on the principles we follow to safely deploy thousands of changes per day. Like Vlad mentioned, we value speed. Therefore, when we think about the release process, timeliness is prioritized throughout. First, we shift health signals as early as possible to improve our trunk health. Newly drafted commits trigger multiple layers of health checks to assist with validation. A single change may pass thousands of targeted tests before acceptance, and developers perform additional testing with manual inspection and by running short-term canaries in production. And once committed, there's a secondary integration testing phase. Our release time validation is highly curated to focus on the detection of critical failures. This ensures test execution is efficient. The goal is not to be perfect in every release, but incremental improvements, which are just good enough for a few hours. Health signals are consistently monitored for speed and reliability, and owners are incentivized to maintain this quality to ensure their signals remain eligible for release time runs. Next, we rely on multiple deploy phases to limit the overall impact to users. In early phases, we can recover faster and prevent external exposure. The total number of phases and time spent in each one is kept at a minimum to increase the overall speed. Developers can also independently roll targeted features post-deployment with an internal control platform called Gatekeeper. Last, all errors late in the release process are evaluated for risk and severity. Only the most severe are allowed to block the release. Our product teams understand this and protect changes with feature flags to limit impact. Still, when mitigations are unsuccessful, getting a fix into the next release should only take a few hours. And if we stop to reset for every large regression, it would block multiple high priority fixes and delay the thousands of changes waiting to get into, in front of users. Now let's review how the release process operates. First, some basic details. WW is shipping continuously all the time, every day, 24 seven, weekends and holidays. We do trunk-based deployments. There are no special branches or changes that get excluded from the next release. We only have three deployment tiers, C1, C2, and C3, which you can think of as alpha, beta, and production. The phases operate independently with limited coordination and are updated opportunistically using the latest validated release from the previous phase. The release runs end-to-end -end without manual steps, but will pause if automated health signals detect a failure. So, a new build test phase starts every 15 minutes from the latest commit in trunk. Jobs run in parallel, ensuring issues are detected and fixed quickly. Once a new build test cycle is complete, it will deploy to the first staging tier C1. From C1, employees have access to their changes and can spot any major issues. Within a few minutes, C2 phase will start updating using the C1 release. Our C2 has a percentage of production traffic. Now changes only a few hours old are live for some users. After the C2 update is complete and with C3 running our stable release, the deployment pauses to collect signals. Any large deviations between C2 and C3 traffic will pause the deployment and notify metric owners to help triage. When there are no detected regressions, the release is promoted to C3. As Led mentioned, we average 10 releases per day, so all of this happens in a matter of hours. It's a simple process overall, and the simplicity is a feature. Developers can estimate when their changes will go live, and there are a relatively small amount of changes, which helps us quickly identify breakages. And remember, except for C2 and C3, each phase runs independently. So newer builds are progressing while C1 is updating, and C1 can update multiple times while C2 and C3 are being deployed. This is how we push hundreds of diffs every few hours. And this is essentially where we began in 2017. Now Vlad will review how we scaled and improved our operations 
with the same size team we had seven years ago. Thanks, Casey. As already mentioned, despite the increasing challenges of the WWW, we have managed to sustain our long-term goals and maintain a rapid release pace through a combination of technical, operational, and process improvements. And it would not be possible to achieve without focusing on the following three key areas. Company-wide ownership culture, release tooling and automation, and independent monolith deployments. Let's look at this in more detail. Fostering company-wide ownership culture was essential to overcome challenges related to product growth and operational scalability. We have a global volunteer on-call team, internally called Tree Huggers, that's me, who manage all major release operations around the clock, with primary rotations across the globe. These engineers are deeply committed to understand the WWW code base and release process, working to reduce release exceptions through a combination of automation and hands-on efforts. We recognize and value the importance of this operational work as a key aspect of engineering excellence. The core release engineering team supports this effort by providing comprehensive training, and they are readily available to help when needed. Shared company release responsibility helps to foster best practices and a strong release culture, ensuring that everyone is aligned to the mission to ship code safely and reliably at scale. And this system brings benefits to the larger organization, including the dissemination of knowledge from release engineering to engineers from all over the company. Company-wide collaboration and shared on call support created a virtuous cycle enabling the core release team to focus on improving infrastructure and processes such as release speed, automation, tooling, and safety mechanisms. This approach helps to reduce the need for manual intervention for release issues. Over the years, we have shifted our focus more on engineers not specialized in release engineering in order to sustain our continuous WWW release speed and reliability. Following this principle, all our release tools are designed with usability and safety in mind for non-specialist users. For example, our Flydeck tool streamlines WWW release management by abstracting complex deployment pipelines. It provides a clear overview of the repository state, ongoing deployments, and recent build outcomes on one surface. Key actions like stopping a release, blocking specific revisions, or starting a new build are easily accessible as well. In order to overcome the challenges of product growth, increased number of developers working on the same code base, and to operate a release without understanding every product specifics, release engineering team have improved and established new interfaces that allow product teams to signal release issues via push blocking alerts, health checks, and revision range blocking tasks. Developers control their product quality, and over the last few years, we have ensured that they have more control mechanisms. As example, developers have alerts to detect issues during the release for quality assurance, in addition to the checks performed during continuous integration. So if alerts fire during the release, product on calls are required to respond quickly and take this as a top priority. The ownership culture is wider than just the infrastructure level. At Meta, employees are always testing new changes in C1, where we can get early signals and prevent bad changes from being released. And as Casey mentioned previously, we are also constantly running experiments through gatekeepers. Now back to you, Casey, for release tooling and automation. The next key area of work has been our tooling and automation improvements. From 2017, we had the primary release pass automated but for everything else, the release operators were essential for finding and clearing errors to keep the release moving. So seven years later, we have 10 times the number of changes and five times the number of tests running during release. But despite this, 95% of our releases run without operator intervention. This was only possible with automation to solve many of the common failures. For example, automation corrects syntax errors introduced by land races. Next, test failures are auto-categorized to determine if it was due to a recent commit or an external issue, 
And when we confirm an error, automation will revert the bad commit and any additional changes related to the same feature we call stacks, which is safer and reduces the chance of merge conflicts. Automation allows tr the triuggers time to focus on more complicated issues. Additionally, it's usually faster than an employee performing the same task, so it increases the number of releases overall. One important part I want to highlight about our tooling and automation improvements is to mention how we decided where to invest. No matter what you're given resources, there's never enough time to solve every problem. Even still, with all the issues we work on, it is important to know which ones affect us the most and by how much. So part of our work over this time has been to define the metrics that will reflect the priorities of the release team, and we use this to identify the regressions and opportunities. As we got better at this, the metrics we looked at shifted over time. At first, we started tracking release rate, which later evolved into categorizing the amount of fully automated releases to improve automation. And when we saw that there were a small number of heavy releases, we added an operational load metric to measure the overall efficiency. All of these iterations required more data, so it makes sense that it took time to evolve to this state. And we continuously evaluate and refresh the speed of our release. Last year, we ran programs directly tracking release speed, where we built new breakdown metrics of each pipeline step. Then for tackling release issues and improving resolution time, we monitored duration and severity of unplanned release stoppages with recovery time and overall change release time metrics. So using data and improving it is critical because framing changes in relation to the metrics keeps projects focused and alerts us to unexpected negative impacts. The latest key area for scaling WW releases has been our most strategic change since 2017. From the very beginning of Facebook, the WW release was run as a single pipeline, but now WW is more than just Facebook.com, which means some internal products want more control. This is because sometimes smaller products simply don't fit as well as we'd like running next to something 100 times the size. Our vision at this time was how to give more control to the product teams that want to be directly responsible for their release. What we came up with is something we're calling multi-tenancy, but essentially provides a distinct release pipeline for select products. Here's how it works. A tenant pipeline will normally mirror the main release process, but with new features and flexibility. Some improvements are custom product-specific tests and alerts, manual controls for skipping releases, having the ability to roll back a tenant pipeline independently, and they can release earlier than the core WW pipeline in some cases. So product teams have more say into when they release, and in return, these teams agree to perform some daily operations like a specialized tree hugger. And they also invest to improve the quality of their health signals. And to be clear, the expectations are that the new pipelines will continue to update with the same overall speed and frequency. So far, the internal customers have been happy with these capabilities, and we are planning to add more teams when the, there's clear value to the overall release. Now with that, I'll hand it back to Vlad for final thoughts. Time to recap some of the key points. Releasing from monorepo at the meta scale is a challenging problem because of the size of the code base, the number of changes and developers working on the same code simultaneously, and growing number of products, influencing operational scalability. However, monorepos remain our best option for large code bases like www, with many benefits, including consistent versioning and development experience, well-integrated code ecosystem, and centralized build and test systems. Core principles are essential, and we have overcome growth, kept release velocity, and achieved some great wins for the company by following the www continuous release approach and our principles of shifting signals to early stages in development process, releasing quickly and iteratively, aiming for good rather than perfect, efficient gradual exposure, and keeping a high bar for reverting release in production. Sticking to established core principles, even when faced with challenges, provide a framework for making decisions, help to stay focused on long-term goals, and maintain consistency. Despite the challenges, frequent releases is a competitive advantage. Increase developer productivity and motivation and distribute changes across smaller, more reliable deployments. Over the years, we have adjusted our technical and operational strategies to accommodate our growing scale. A strong focus on fostering a company-wide ownership culture, leveraging automation and implementing proactive mitigation without human intervention have been a key to navigating our release process. 
Finally, evolution is on the horizon with federated control of monolith deployments. Multi-tenancy enabled us to evolve from a single monolithic deployment to a more flexible delivery system to address operational scalability challenges. Our release plane is ready to ship. It's an exciting time with so many advances in automation and tooling. But what truly made our journey possible is a strong company-wide involvement of many infrastructure and product teams. Our release experience might differ from yours, but we hope the main takeaways will be applicable and helpful. We will continue to drive initiatives that improve the release process and hope to share our new experiences, tools, and best practices soon.